what up guys, that comic also here doing another review wrap up. Um today we we actually got four books on the uh, on the docket today. We're gonna be doing Doctor Strange Damnation number four, Venomized number four, Venom number one sixty five, and Batman Beyond number nineteen. Um so let's start off with what I thought was probably the weakest book, and that was Doctor Strange Damnation. It wasn't weak because it was bad. It was weak to me because, um, like most Marvel events now, uh, it ties up in a very convenient way. Uh, and if you didn't read the uh, Ghost Rider spinoff, which, shame on you, uh, that book was amazing. It wasn't amazing. It was really good, though. Um, this relies heavily on that. And if you didn't read that this book becomes that much more convenient in its wrap-up. Uh, you essentially have the heroes uh, fighting, kind of losing battle. Uh, Mephisto comes down to kind of gloat, but then finds out that the, the riders all of a sudden turn on him because in that instant, you know, Johnny had been down in hell for years and years and years. Um, but in that instant, it finally took that he was king um, and he was able to take control of the riders and put Mephisto out. Um, there's a really kind of cheesy fight between Mephisto and Doctor Strange where he has the souls of, of uh, several Avengers. Um, but the key thing in the end of this is the relationship between, uh, between uh, Doctor Strange and Wong. And I think that's what this series was about mostly was about their relationship even though uh, Wong really probably took the center stage um, here you kind of have you know a moment with them and he said you risked your life uh, and your soul to rescue me after everything I put you through he's like he's like enough of this I simply asked myself you know even he's like even if he hated me even if it meant the end of existence and the corruption of every soul on earth, would Stephen come help me? He's like, and the answer is, uh, was of course. He's like, without a second thought. And then this is what I thought was funny. He says, uh, yes, but you see, I did give it a second, uh, my, or I did give my plan a second thought, and then a third. And that's why my plan worked, and yours did not. <laughs> and he kind of sit there for a second, they crack up. And again, it kind of shows them, you know, kind of mending mending you know mending defense and and being being friends again even though uh you know and it, it says that Wong said he was he's gonna stay in Vegas but he'll make his way back to the sanctum uh just not yet then like the movies um Marvel comics are now even doing post credits so you get the nice wrap up a nice walk into the sunset with with Doctor Strange and Bats um, but then you get this post, post scene, which unfortunately, I forget, I don't know who did the, the art on this, but it's whoever did the art on issues two and three, which was so washed out and bland. I don't blame the artist, you know, I blame the colorist because it's so like, blah. Uh, but apparently Dr. Strange is putting together a team to go get Johnny back out of hell. So that might... That might be something interesting. It just says the end question mark. So maybe it'll be something. Maybe it won't. Um, next up. Uh, Venomized number four. This series continues to interest me just because, again, um, poisons are new to uh, the Marvel Universe. Uh, again, first introduced in Venomverse back in the fall. They still really are kind of finding who they are, what they can do. Um... And this book, and this series is really kind of fleshing them out. Not only, um, you know, as, you know, what dry, is driving them, but what their weaknesses are and, and like, what are their capabilities for being um, in, like, once they are poisoned. So, I like this because it's very obvious that, you know, even once you become a poison, you know, you have like the little minions, but they're driven by this hive mind and the hive mind takes the form of whatever they love. And so like Thanos is, is death. You know, Dr. Doom is his mother. Jean, 
Gene sees Professor X. And this is what, you know, this is what I like. Carnage just sees death, like people dying. That's what he loves. Just people hurt and dying. So that is his like hive, hive mind kind of thing. Um, there's another little interesting bit with Carnage um, a little later on. Uh, you get kind of a, a nice battle scene uh, between between everyone and um, I don't know what what is up with Kitty Pride's face and hair. She looks like uh, like Gohan maybe. I don't know. Naruto. Uh, but you get you get a really good um, kind of sense of the fight. Uh, before this though. They talk about anti venom being kind of the the go to, and Flash makes it very clear. He's like, "Look, I don't want to murder anybody." He's like, "My," he's like, "I heard a horrible scream when I touched, you know, touched Punisher, and he liquefied." And he's like, "There was a person in there. I killed him." He's like, "I murdered him," and Eddie tries to tell him like, "No, you didn't." And he's like, "Once they get absorbed by the poison, there's no one left in there." Um, that kind of plays out a little bit uh, later when they escape. Uh, you know, the heroes escape. They go to try and take the fight to the poisons in space. And um, Carnage is like, take me back home. I think um, think they're getting away from us. I, I want to prove them wrong. And he says, you know, I don't know who this is can't tell by their their markings but it says our orders to remain on earth uh, we need to bolster our ranks and strengthen the hive and carnage is like shink like nope and it's like but then of course thanos uh kind of shows up i didn't understand this part either so doc uh miss marvel so one of the the quinjet is going down miss marvel um you know Cap's like, is everyone okay? He's like, I think we're okay. I used my body or my symbiote to create a cushion and soften the crash. Which, okay, so Miss Marvel could then expand her, you know, her symbiote out. But then it shows, like, spider webs. You know, it made sense in Venomized that everyone had kind of spider-like powers because, again, the, the symbiote still... Um, was on Peter first and then went to the next host whereas these symbiotes are, are grafting to their host the first time so the webs don't make sense um, yeah this series is, continues to just again it it's interesting I like it um, yeah pick it up check it out uh, next let's do Batman Beyond Batman Beyond number 19 um, this one was kind of a little bit, I wouldn't even say it's a letdown. No, it's not a letdown. It's, it was all right. So, um, Terry has been in trouble. This is the end of the long payback storyline. Uh, Terry's been in trouble. Uh, so Bruce kind of did the one thing that he thought he could do. And that was to send somebody out into the field. And that was Terry's little brother, Matt, as Robin. Uh, and of course, Dana shows up and she, she immediately starts giving Bruce like the business. And she's like, well, why aren't you out there helping? And he's like, you know, don't you think I want to be? You know, I hate being stuck in this chair. One, I don't understand why Matt didn't take the full Robin outfit. He kind of just took the mask and the belt. I don't know. Maybe it's a sizing thing. Maybe he just didn't have time. But like Dana even, again, the whole time... Uh, Bruce is trying to help Terry, her boyfriend, get back. And she's like, using children like this or using a child like this? Sick. And he's just like, he he's brushing her off. And the whole time, she's like ragging him and ragging him. And he's just, Bruce is just sitting there like, ah, I'm, I'm going to ignore this. But it kind of comes to a head um, where... You know, Matt may have put himself in a little bit too much danger. Um, and, of course, Terry finds out. 
Uh, I will be interested to see where this kind of picks up if Matt will continue to be a Robin or uh, if he will kind of maybe form his own path. We'll see. Venom. So this, this marks the end of this run, I guess, um, with, uh, with Mike Costa um, leading the way for Danny Coates's, um yeah, Venom number one next month. So, spoiler, uh, in the last issue, it, it came out that the symbiote was about to uh, have another spawn, or is about to spawn, which it kept from Eddie, which I think, you know, of course, if you found out your girlfriend was like nine months pregnant and you're like, wait, what? You'd be a little heartbroken too. Um, so thankfully, uh, Eddie's kidnapped, um, but thankfully, uh, Spider-Woman, who the, it's kind of funny, the symbiote, uh, kind of showed her, didn't show her the, didn't tell her that it was about to spawn, but it like, she could feel it, you know, I guess being a woman and being a mom, which not, not a bad, bad mom bod. Um, but anyway, they, so they track them down to, um, Alchemax labs where, you know, Eddie finally is able to, you know, separate from the symbiote. It spawns. Um, there's a little bit of a, a twist at the end and then, uh, Eddie kind of puts it to the Alchemax that they can keep the symbiote spawn, but, but there's no, there's no hosts until Eddie can deem them ready. So he's kind of being like the dad, which I'll be interested to see like how that affects the, um, kind of the, the, the outcome of this, this new symbiote. Cause all the other spawns of Venom became, you know, wild and, and, um, became monsters and even even the venom symbiote itself is like I don't want this I don't want our our this kid to be become a monster like you have to be in its life so dads you know be good dads but yeah that's my uh, that's my wrap up for for this week so uh, yeah check check these out they're uh, they're all great books um, and mine is probably damnation but yeah subscribe over here watch some more videos hit me up in the comments let me know what you guys think and I'll see you next time.